Well, you know, uh, Roger, I'd like to ask the audience, what would the audience think if NASA had come forward and said, look, John Glenn is a bona fide American hero. He got cheated out of a second flight. Let's fly him because he deserves to fly. Would the audience support that, I wonder? All right, let's do this by applause. How many people agree with uh, Miles that perhaps uh, John Glenn did get cheated out of a second trip and he should go up there? Let's hear it. Now let's hear, are there those who think that perhaps John shouldn't have gone? Let's hear that. Well, I think it's pretty overwhelming, at least on this vote, that people well, you know, support that, the fact what, that John Glenn should have gone up. Which, which brings me to my point, Roger. The, the point is, you know, NASA insists on selling this as a science mission. They probably didn't have to. I mean, uh, I think maybe people read between the lines and see what it's really all about. It's, it's great public relations for NASA. Uh, it is uh, perhaps, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, something that is owed somebody who has done a lot for the country on many fields and so I think they have to present it as science right Buzz? Is yes I, I think so uh, but I you know I really think there's more behind this uh, because I think there's so many people out there that say gee John is physically able that's true very capable but he is 77 and if he can go up in space why can't the rest of us so All it's right. an inspiration uh, I so think it's it really a break is. right now let me interrupt you too because coming up what are the medical risks of space travel and what kind of tests will be done on john glenn we'll talk with a cardiologist who has flown on the space shuttle columbia stay with us Live is brought to you by Cancer Treatment Centers of America. John Glenn said recently that he learned President Kennedy had ordered that he not go back into space after his first mission. Kennedy didn't want the risk of a national hero dying in space. Welcome back to Talk Back Live, but first let's go up to Wall Street and hear from Rhonda Schaffler. Rhonda, how's the markets doing today? Hi there. Well, we do have stocks taking off this afternoon. It's looking to be Wall Street's best rally in about two weeks. Right now, checking the Dow Jones Industrial Average, it's currently up about 86 points. Very strong advance here. We've got technology stocks showing a lot of strength, banking stocks, drug stocks, all attracting buyers this afternoon. The Nasdaq Composite is higher as well. It is currently up about 14 points, and we've got interest rates falling back a bit. That's how things are looking at Wall Street. Back now to Talk Back Live. John Glenn will be undergoing a number of tests on this space journey to measure the effects of weightlessness on the body. And, of course, his age makes those experiments of particular interest. Our next guest, Dr. Drew Gaffney, is a cardiologist, and he rode the shuttle Columbia into space. Welcome, Dr. Gaffney. Dr. Gaffney, before I ask you any questions, I want to hear about the experiment that was done on you. When you were riding the Columbia into space, you had a needle in you, didn't you? Well, it was a plastic tube that went from a bend in the elbow up to my heart so we could measure the pressure of the blood that shifts up into the chest when you're without gravity. Okay, Dr. Gaffney, I have to ask you this question. Didn't that hurt? Uh, <laughs> actually, it didn't. And what had happened is we had a launch delay, and so I actually got to keep it for five or six days. Uh, so I was pretty used to it by the time we flew. Oh, you mean lucky you had to have the needle in you for five or six days before you took off on the, uh, on the rocket? Is that correct? Yeah, the, the only disadvantage was you, you couldn't swim in the ocean, and it sort of grossed out the pilots when they saw it. <laughs> All uh, right, let's have some questions for Dr. Gaffney. But Gina, you have a question. Yeah, I was wondering what kind of experiments is John Glenn going to go through while he's in space? All right, Dr. Gaffney, what kind of experiments will John Glenn go through? Well, I think they're, they're trying to take advantage of experiments that they've done over the years in, in younger astronauts. And those have to do with how the, the blood pressure is regulated, how, uh, what happens to your heart rate. And then they look at, at blood and urine to see what's happening to bone and muscle and how the kidney and the rest of the body regulates itself when there's no gravity. Dr. Gaffney, why is it of particular importance that we do this with a man uh, of advanced age or a man of 77 years like John Glenn is as opposed to someone younger? 
Well, I, I actually uh, share some of your commentators' uh, view that, that that wasn't really the purpose of this. And I think the, that having decided they're going to do it, they're taking advantage of the fact that they've not had an astronaut of, of anywhere near that age. And there are some specific questions that you could ask about, you know how things work in a 40-year-old or a 30-year-old. You might get some information about what happens in a, in a much older person. And that tells you more about the physiology of space. Buzz Aldrin, uh, the, I suppose the argument is here that, that NASA is maybe, as you pointed out, more in the publicity business with John Glenn going than, than any of the science business. Should NASA be in the, in the PR business? Uh, well, I think it is, whether uh, it really uh, wants to be or not, uh, and it should be, because I think the American public would like to hear uh, as complete a discussion as possible uh, and know where it is we're going. Uh, I hope that NASA will realize that, uh, that part of our uh, purpose is to uh, bring the space program back to the people. And one way to do that is to tell them as much as possible through public relations, and the other is through a sense of participation. We invite people to come out uh, and tour around the different NASA centers, and that way they learn more about it. Uh, they go through the simulators, they see what the, uh, what the training is like, and one of these days they're going to see what actual spaceflight is like. All right, we have a question from the audience. Lucretia. Yes. I wanted to ask, Buzz, what exactly is it like when you're leaving the Earth's atmosphere and entering into outer space? Is it just a sudden change of gravity, or what exactly happens? Uh, Buzz, Lee, leave it to the young people to ask the absolutely <laughs> right question. What is it like when you leave uh, gravity? Well, as the rocket leaves the ground, it's consuming fuel, and it gets lighter and lighter, so the same thrust increases the acceleration or the g-force and then if you're getting rid of a stage you get rid of that stage and then the next stage lights up and you're back to lower g-forces but they build on up and as you get just about into orbit above the atmosphere the uh, the engine is going to cut off and now all of a sudden everything is in drifting flight it's no longer being accelerated it's all in what we call an orbit and it's a most relaxing feeling. There are no forces on you, so you begin to drift around. But as we found out, there's a certain disorientation that can affect maybe 50% of the people. All right. Miles, we have Angelina on the phone from Connecticut, and I think she has a question for you. Go ahead, Angelina. Hi, Miles. Hi, wanted, Angelina. How uh, are you? I wanted to uh, first commend you on a great job today. I was glued to the television set since 7 o'clock this morning. Thank Great job. You. And I wanted to ask you, since recently learning the exciting news that you're a licensed pilot, would you consider going up in the shuttle? And if you did, would it be more exciting just being in space or just having the opportunity to report on it? Now, Miles, I don't know if this is in your contract, so, you know, you better be <laughs> careful about what you say. <laughs> All right, Angelina, call my agent. He'll talk to you about this. <laughs> no, um, yes, I'd go in a heartbeat. I really would, because I think uh, just as a human experience, I mean, just look at that right there, to, to be uh, given that kick there, that three million pound net kick into space and then go from three Gs to zero Gs and just to be able to see the world unfold and see the entire world pass by you in 90 minutes time, that would be tremendous. But on top of that, to go up there and try to come up with ways to explain it to people that it hasn't been explained before, uh, because let's face it, astronauts uh, by and large are not chosen for their skills at uh, communicating uh, the subtleties of spaceflight to people. Some, some are good at it, like Buzz. Uh, others are not as good. And I think uh, to have that perspective would give, uh, take it to a different uh, level for the average person. All right, we're going to take a break. We have to take this break, but our coverage of the shuttle mission will continue. I have to say goodbye to former astronaut Buzz Aldrin. Thanks for joining us, Buzz. We're going to be right back to speak to a close friend of John Glenn's. Stay with us. Every two years, NASA takes applications for new astronauts. Normally, 20 candidates are picked from about 4,000 who apply. Any adult in excellent physical condition with a college degree can apply. 